All right, let's try that again. So sorry about that, but the game just yeah crashed. So that's quite annoying. Um, so I just loaded up and did the first things again. Um, let's try again. Let's take uh, what's this? Yeah, I think so. Here was something along like this line. Uh, let's just take this guy instead. That's fine. Um, I actually want brown hair, I suppose. Black hair? No, that's not brown. Something more like this. Um, take primary black. And this, well, hmm. Let's just take this. Facial hair, he got a, he got a scruffy beard. Something like this. And hair is... Mm. Four again, I suppose. Yeah, that's fine. So let's continue. Um, next. Hey there. Now I am the leader of the group. Hmm. Follow me. Let's take Stoic. Yeah. Let's call him uh, Valon, like my last one. Except. All right. So let's try this game. Caravan Master Odemar. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red moustache and sacking a jowls, quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight mm -hmm. everybody stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, course. Which case you'll be dead in a day. Yeah, don't drink water. Got it. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink, called a springberry, about the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. All right. So find uh, a berry, a springberry, and then make some tea from it, all right? I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. His assistant's... Odemar looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparfield, who carries an old sun-bleached bow. And then he said to that guy, Brings, find some water. Sparfield nods and slides the, slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Where would I find these berries? What are those ruins? Is it dangerous out here? What are those huge rocks coming out of the ground? Or oh, five. Leave. Leave. I'll go about those berries then. So where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common round here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. All right. Bush. What are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Air Glonfoth, okay. Mm, Glonfoth and arrows, okay. So of course, all the ones tribes. around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Okay. Your character's attributes, skills, class, race, culture, and sex may all open up options for you in dialogue. These options are not necessarily superior to the other responses, but gives you a wider variety of choice to select from. The manner in which someone responds to your choices depends on their individual personality and attitude. Okay. 
who did build these ruins. Got different names for them. Settlers called them in Gwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. All right. In Gwithans. Is it dangerous out here? Not if you hurry about your business. Okay. And not if the weather holds up. There's a concern in his tone, but he does not elaborate. Okay. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year? Rain, mostly. And wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here, time to time. Locals call it a beowick. Born out of the ether. The spirit's path. Never seen it myself. Never care to. Okay. What are those huge rocks coming up out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. Okay. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. All right. So rock that goes down into the earth. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. It's the soul butchers. That doesn't sound very friendly. Yeah, I'll leave about... I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. Hmm. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on even on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Okay. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. Hmm. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. <laughs> Off with you. Aiden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. All right. So, welcome to Pillars of Eternity. If this is your first visit to the world of Eora, Aura, Eora, you may want to watch these windows to become familiar with the tools and interfaces available to you. I'll keep this running. Your party always consists of your character and up to five additional companions or adventurers. While the caravan is camped outside the Glandfathen ruins, Odemar has assigned Kalisha to help you. Kalisha is a fighter, a class that excels at close combat, close quarters defense. Use her abilities to complement your own. Okay, so we've got two fighters. To select the party member, click on their selection circle, uh, their portrait, or press the number button that corresponds to their position in the party, starting with one at the left. To select multiple party members, click and hold anywhere on the screen and drag the marquee, the marker, over the circles of the party members you'd like to include. Yeah. To move selected characters, click anywhere on the screen where your cursor is a circle of four wedges. All selected characters will path to their corresponding position in the formation. If you see a red circle with a slash through it, you cannot walk on that path of the map, that part of the, of the map. When multiple party members are selected, the action bar is hidden. To see an, an individual character's op options, select only that character. Right, so like in Tyranny that I've al al already played. Alright, so we need to find spring berries. Um, and if it is like in Tyranny, you can hold down tab to see stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see these rocks. And these tall glass green pillars appear as if they have sprouted from the earth. The flickering the freaking fire sets a shadow dancing within. Okay. Okay. I've got it. Something over here. I'll get it open. That's locked, so no can do. Okay. Uh, take all. Most people you encounter in the world are neutral or friendly. You can interact with them by clicking on their selection circle. 
Many characters will simply greet you and go on their way, but others will have larger conversations to explore. The merchant, the merchant Heodan, has a conversation that opens a store with equipment for sale. Right, and Oldemar also told us to give, give him. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. It sounds very h high in my ears. It's this so let's lower it a bit. Yes. Mm. Grab this potion regeneration and some copper pan. Yes. Right. Mm, nothing up here. No. Hello. You see a man uh, wearing simple but mo mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered, it's covered with uneven stubble. As if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Uh, who are you? I'm a trader, originally from the Adir Empire. Adir. I've been trying to establish new business out here. Life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? Uh, okay, so we got. We might as well try. With an outlook like that, I'm sure you'll do. do I'll sure you'll do well. If you think these. Caravanners are prickly. Watch out for those axe wielding Odemar mentions. Axe wielders Odemar mentions. How incredible naive. I'm surprised you lasted this long. Let's try and be somewhat nice. Uh, with an outlook like that, I'm sure you'll do well. We'll see, I suppose. I'm just trying to do the right by my family. You now have one rank in a disposition reputation. These reputations represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people, and benign reputations often brings out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity, but if your main character is a priest or paladin, you must be careful not to misalign their dispositions with what is favored by their deity and order, respe respectively. For the main character only, their disposition will modify the effects of Holy Radiance for Priests and Faith and Conviction for Paladins. Okay, so, but we're not a Paladin or Priest. Okay. Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Tell me about the Edir, em Edir Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Ceres and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood. Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. In fact, our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a loop sided grin and nods at the other scattered caravanners. Why'd you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Raid Ceres? <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. All right. He shrugs. Deerwood is a former Edir colony, uh, so it seemed like a good place to start. And as much as I admire the Resirian's work ethic, they always struck me as a little fanatical. Sounds reasonable enough. That's high-minded of you. Seems like you got the short end of the stick. <laughs> well, that sounds reasonable enough, I suppose. Out here, I'm just taking it one day at a time. Alright, so, well, let's see what you got. Store allows you to trade and sell your items for copper pieces, CP, or items in the store's inventory. Merchants buy items from you at a greatly reduced price. If you sell something, you may see it appear in the store's inventory with a much higher cost. Stores periodically refresh their inventories. Okay. So we got this, and I think we got a stash here, right? Yeah. Party, money, okay, our camping supplies. Alright, we got nothing in the stash. We got a piglet. Hmm. This tiny titanic pig. Wait, what? This tiny titanic ti titanic pig has an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at odds with the, its endearing behavior. It follows you dutifully and requires nothing in return save companionship. Oh, it's like a pet. Ugh, I hate pets. <laughs> Whoa, what's wrong with the name here? Gorn's Pledge. Uh, grants Gorn's pledge to per rest. 
this item grants the ability to shield the wearer from the myriad perils that plague the world of Eora. Aura. Eora? An aspect of the of the god Eorthas gone represents the harvest of old age, symbolized here by the many interlocking sickles that form the ring. As Gorn helps protect the dignity of old age, so too do his followers pledge to prevent young lives from being harvested before that time. Okay, a uh, lockpick. Okay, well, I don't think we'll buy anything, but battle axe. Is that two handed? No, one handed. Pike is probably two handed. Yeah. Are oh, easily the longest weapons. Plus 1.8 weapon reach. Okay. From behind the allies. Okay. Hmm. Great sword. Hmm. Brigadine. We had 110. That's too expensive. We could buy a great sword. Ah, let's wait. Alright, so let's find that. Yeah, and um, it's only because the uh, first episode we got a crash. Otherwise, I'll try and make these episodes roughly 45 minutes ish. Uh, yeah. Anyways, let's see if we can find that. Uh, uh, spring berries. That's it. The fallen tree doesn't budge. Sap oozes from the Not looking forward to trying to lift that thing trunk. tomorrow. Okay. Horse, horse, horse. Hello? Okay, you can hold down the middle mouse button and move around here. Okay. I suppose yes. Exploring exploration is key in Pillars of Eternity. As you make your through as you, as you make your way through the eastern reach, open the area map to see what parts of the map you've already been to and what's left to explore. Alright. That is Sparfield, the guy who should be looking for water. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. <laughs> yes. Okay, we've got something here. Edmeth Verd. Okay. The path the path winds through a narrow canyon. You shouldn't stray too far. Back the way you came. Groves in the road marks the passage of hundreds of caravans. Okay. Let's check by those outcroppings. Okay, Pillars of Eternity Combat uses a possible real-time system. Because you will often manage more than one per character at a time, it's a good idea to pause the game, issue orders and resume real-time to see the orders you play out. The options menu also contain many choices for automatic pausing when certain conditions are met. E.g. the start of combat like now. Alright, so we can press 1. And you can go and knock this guy down. We can also press here, I suppose, and you can just go here, right? And then pause should... Are those out yes. Once your character has engaged in uh, melee... One of your characters has been engaged in melee. When characters are engaged, they immediately stop moving. If they move again, they will provoke a disengagement attack from the enemies engaging them. Your characters will also automatically engage enemies when they initiate attacks against them with melee weapons. Right? You can see these little red uh, like lines going to and from. The green one means that uh, Kali Kalicia, Kaliska, Kaliska is engaging here, and the wolf is engaging here, so it's fine. All characters in the game, friend or foe, have four primary defenses against attacks. In deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. These defenses are based on the character's attributes, level, items, and other effects. Accuracy is compared to the appropriate defenses when an attack is made. If accuracy is below the targeted defense, the attack suffers a penalty, to the roll and it's more likely to result in a miss. If, if accuracy is above the targeted defense, the attack is more likely to result in a crit. All right. Um, all attacks that do damage have to overcome the target's damage reduction, DR. An enemy's DR redu reduces the incoming damage by the listed amount down to a minimum percentage. If you're having difficulty hurting an enemy, try switching to a weapon or attack that does different damage type. Most enemies are strong against the one or two damage types and weak against a similar number. Okay, uh, oh, we can also zoom in, right. On pause. Whoa, you scored a crit. Guess it's this number, right? 
A crit is a better result than a hit, and they are more likely to occur when the attack's accuracy is higher than the target's defense. Attacks that do damage will do more damage on crit. Attacks that, afflicts, uh, that inflict status effects or afflictions will have increased duration on a crit. Graces are worse than hits and suffer decreasing, decreased damage and effects duration. Alright. So... You can also... No. Oh, it's dead. Mm. Mm. Splat. Take this wolf hide. Right. Okay. This is it. We got the spring. Oh. Uh, as you receive quest, your journal will update with relevant information. If you ever get stuck, open it to review your notes. All right. Kaliska, mercenary. That's because I'm a mercenary. I think you look like you've seen your share of action. What? What you do before you came out here? I'm a war. Uh, a veteran? Veteran? <laughs> uh, I'm a blade for hire. I was a blade for hire. I used to go on adventures and expeditions, whatever paid. I was a constable. That isn't your business. <clears throat> I usually play like the good guy in these games, so I'll probably tend to drift towards that as well. But let's say I was a constable. Yeah? How did you happen to come here? A group of brigands overwhelmed us and took the town. It's under their law now. There wasn't much copper in it. No matter what it did, people still got hurt. That isn't your business. Mm. Let's say a group of brigands overwhelmed us. You got a lot on your mind then. Hopefully things work out in the end. But in my experience, uh, they don't always. Okay. Kaliska breathes in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Radrix's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You had to settle like the rest of the lot? I guess Lord Reddick is the guy who offered like people to come and settle, which we were, we were told earlier. It's a hard offer to pass up. No, I'm just passing through. I haven't given it much thought. Well, I don't know. Sure, it's a hard offer to pass up. You won't find many offers like, offers like it in these parts, believe me. Got some big plans in store. I'm going to settle here and start a new life. I'm going to lay low for a while. Try not to draw too much attention to myself. Getting filthy rich. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm going to lay low here for a while. Settle. Mm. Let's take this one, not draw too much attention. You picked. Uh, let me just check here. My alarm just went off because I have to cut the episode real soon. You picked the right place then. Gilded Veils days. Gilded Veils days away from any real civilization. Anyways, I'm wasting time here. Odemar will give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Why are you here? Tell me about yourself. What can you tell me about Durwood? Alright, let's get back to camp. Well, let's just talk with her first. Why are you here? Kaliska signs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here sometimes back. She sent me a letter. She seemed worried. But that's how she always is. Last time though, she asked me to come out. and That's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in Ixamithil. But I'd do anything for her. She's, well, she's a much better woman than me, so I'm here and we'll see. Odomar I've worked with before. He doesn't usually drive a, a route this way, but he's doing it for me. Tell me about yourself. I got simple needs. I like open skies and far horizons. I find work that lets me live that way. My family wants us too. We started in Durwood. But my parents ended up in the living lands. I got a brother in Rawatau and another in Adir. My sister in Gilded Vale. She's the only real homebody. What can you tell me about Durwood? I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be part of the Adir Empire. Broke off after a war some years back. The locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. I've been out of touch, but I've been hearing weird things been hearing weird kind of things about it lately. People having trouble giving birth, I guess. What? People having trouble giving birth. Okay, a lot of them. Been going on for years now, but somehow it's gotten getting worse. With an uneasy tremor in her voice, she adds, I'll have to ask my sister more about it. Alright, let's get back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfield's getting any your water any anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Slap him, ar slap him around a little. 
streams down that way. Come on, let's get you your water in dialogue. Okay, but I have to cut the episode here, so thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed this well, let's play. So I hope to see you next time. Bye.